Welcome to Switch. It's a midweek event of the Elevation Church. I hope you enjoy the worship. Uh, this is a special uh, event that we're having today. As you can see, I'm, I'm seated and it's different uh, from the regular Switch teaching experience. But I'm definitely sure that you're going to have a great and impactful experience today. We started a teaching series, uh, The Rafa Effect, which speaks to the fact that God wants us to be uh, physically, emotionally, and mentally whole. Uh, and we realize that a lot of the time when we speak to the subject of healing and health, uh, we focus on the healing of the body. And a lot of the time we don't get to talk about the healing of the soul, uh, mental and emotional wholeness as much as we should. Uh, so in this uh, switch experience for this season of this teaching, we're going to be looking into this area of uh, healing and wholeness a little bit more. You know, Todd John 2, it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you... Uh, that you prosper and you be in, uh, 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 in health even as your soul prospers. Uh, so the, the, the issue of soul prosperity, emotional and mental wholeness is also very, very important to us. Uh, today, we're going to be speaking to this topic and I have uh, someone with me who uh, God has given the grace to be able to speak to the subject uh, she's done a lot of work in this area, and that's why I have her with me today. So I have here uh, uh, Zuria Olubukola Olowe. She's a lawyer, a community mental health trainer, and a play therapist. So don't, don't ask me about uh, who a play therapist is. She's going to speak to that. All right. Zuria, it's, it's nice to have you with me today. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> it's, it's my pleasure to have you. Um, uh, before we, we get into uh, the, the, the meat of the matter today, I, I want you to uh, share this. If you're watching on social media, invite somebody to join uh, the, 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 the service and this broadcast because I, I'm fully persuaded that this is going to be a blessing to you. Uh, let's start out uh, with one or two thoughts from the Word of God, and I'm going to bring uh, Zuria back, and we're, we're going to answer some of the questions that some of you have sent to us uh, via social media for the past, uh, uh, past couple of weeks. We've asked you uh, for some burning questions in your heart about the issue of handling hurts, handling, you know, uh, uh, emotional illness, and all kinds of things. And some of us have sent those questions, and we're going to handle those questions uh, in the time that we'll, we'll have together. But I'd love to read uh, just a portion of the scripture, or maybe a portion or two of the scriptures, uh, firstly from Isaiah chapter 61, reading from verse 1 to 3 from the New Living, uh, sorry, the New King James Version. It says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach uh, good news or good tidings to the poor. He has sent me uh, to heal the brokenhearted. Now, if I will pause here, I'll say this, that uh, this is a Messianic prophecy of Isaiah about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the fact that the anointing of God is going to be upon him and the, the, the grace of God is going to be upon him, one of the things that this grace and this anointing is going to be uh, able to do in the life of everyone that will encounter Christ is the healing of broken heart. Uh, so it's not just the healing of physical body. Jesus raised the dead. He cleansed the, the, the leper. He opened blind eyes and all that. But this anointing also heals a uh, uh, broken heart. It speaks to the, 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 the way the power of God works in the affairs or our emotional affairs, if I can put it that way. Uh, so he said to proclaim liberty to the captive, the opening of the prison doors to those who are bound. And a lot of the time, people are not only bound physically. Uh, this anointing is not just to go to the of prison and say, everybody who has been incarcerated for one uh, offense or the other come out. No, it's talking about people who are bound emotionally, uh, bound mentally, bound in the areas of life that are beyond uh, the, 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 the physical. And the fact that the grace of God and the anointing of God and the power of the Holy Spirit can liberate people uh, from any kind of mental and emotional bondage. He said to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God, and to comfort all who mourn in Zion. So it also speaks to the fact that even in the house of God and in the kingdom of God, Zion there speaks to uh, the holy day Israel, and we are all, you know, uh, uh, partakers of the covenant of, that God has with Abraham and his descendant. And it means that being a Christian will not 
uh, uh, does not really suggest that at one point or the other, uh, we will not mourn or we will not go through any heartbreaking situation. Well, but it says this anointing, this grace that is upon Christ is to comfort those who mourn in Zion, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give to them beautiful ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Uh, one, I mean, uh, last Sunday we, we spoke a bit to the issue of the spirit of heaviness handling the spirit of heaviness. And the fact that w when our world is in such a crisis as this, uh, one of the things that will be very prevalent is the operations of the spirit of heaviness. Uh, and when the spirit of heaviness is in operation, uh, people struggle emotionally. Uh, they struggle for emotional balance. Uh, they pay more attention to the things that are not working and the sources of fear and all that than the things that are working in their lives. And I want to ask you at this critical juncture in this discussion, where are you right now? Are you struggling with the spirit of heaviness? Is fear very pervasive in your home, in your office, in your own heart? And how are you dealing with that? How are you coping with that? Because uh, God wants you, you and I, to live through this season with the help of the Spirit and uh, uh, with emotional stability and emotional wholeness uh, that we will be able to leverage the healing power of Christ that supersedes just healing of the body that goes to the level of the healing of the emotion. Uh, so it says to give to, to, to them beautiful ashes, the oil of joy for burning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Uh, uh, I, I, I want you to understand that God is at work in, in, in us, and uh, this season, the will of God for you is to engage mental and emotional wholeness, to be able to deal with hurts, uh, to, be, to be able to embrace the healing power of God. And this healing also comes through the encounters that we have with people, uh, people who have been trained to help us to walk through he, uh, uh, emotional uh, illness, to help us walk through mental illness. Uh, and with that, as Christians also, we also have the power of God that we can engage from time to time. So in this uh, service today, I'm also going to be praying uh, with us, uh, and as we pray, we believe that the heavens will open and the healing power of God will flow through us. But before we go into all that, uh, we, 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 I will allow uh, Zuria to speak from a professional point of view uh, to the things that you and I may be facing at this time that we may not even be aware of, and how do we deal with them? And uh, uh, so, how do we engage knowledge and then couple that with the power of God? Because the Bible says that Christ has been made unto us the wisdom of God and the power of God. And uh, he releases that wisdom when we seek him. And some people specialize in just seeking God and seeking the wisdom of God in books, uh, in documented history, and in knowledge that they may be able to help us to deal with the situations that will confront us in life. Uh, so again, uh, Zuria, you're, you're welcome uh, to you. switch. Uh, this is the midweek event of the Elevation Church. And people are joining us from all over the place, uh, across social media platforms. And uh, as we speak to this subject today, I want you to uh, just uh, start out with uh, some of the cough uh, um, experience or what, 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 how do you uh, want to dive into this? I want to just dive into it somehow. Yeah. Okay. Um, every time I'm called to either speak or minister or be on a, a panel on mental health issues, one of the first things I tend to start with people is um, at the age of 10, I tried committing suicide myself. And for me then, I didn't even know it was depression. I didn't know I was going through my own personal traumatic event or incident. But I knew that something was just not right for me. And I felt the only way I could help myself or the way, only way I could just keep myself from going through those pain was just to take my own life. And that was at the age of 10. So I would always say to people that when it comes to depression, depression knows, has no age and it has no limits. And like you rightly said, Pastor Godman, you said something that is very key. You said that we are Christians does not mean that we would not go through our own challenges or our own pain. And we need to understand times and season of these challenges and this pain. They would come. How we deal with them and how we treat them is what is important for us and how we come out of this pain. Now, one would fail to realize that we are in a state of distress and discomfort that needs both the spiritual 
and that needs both therapeutic approach, what we would do is we would continually keep ourselves uh, at a standstill point and we'll keep uh, dwelling in our pain and in our heart. Um, is mental health issue, is it real? Yes, it is real. Is everyone going through it? Yes, everyone is. Almost everyone is going through it. Uh, most especially this season that we found ourselves in, in a season where we had never prepared for, but we found ourselves in this peculiar, like I would always call it, peculiar and unique season. And it has brought up a lot of branches, a lot of roots for people, and people are saying to themselves, I am tired. I want to give up. I do not know what is going to happen next. But the truth is, is there healing? Yes, there is healing. Is there help? Definitely that there is help. Getting the right help, going for the right sources, and also getting healing so that we can be healed is the most important um, result that anyone needs now. Thank you very much, uh, Zuri. Um, uh, like, we all know that it's an unprecedented time in the history of, of, of the human race. Uh, what's going on now, uh, I find myself, well, I count it a privilege to be able to be alive now, to witness it. Some people yeah. said maybe they would rather not be alive now, but uh, I mean, you, we have to be adventurous about mm -hmm. life. Uh, the, the, the last thing that shut down the world like this happened maybe uh, about 100 years ago. 100 years ago, ago yes. You know, so it's a privilege to be alive now to witness this, and God is going to use it uh, to do a lot more great things in our lives. You know, Paul was writing in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, when you read from about verse 7 uh, down to 11, you said we're persecuted but not abandoned. Yes. Cast down but not dismayed. Mm -hmm. uh, he, 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 he said everything that he went through, he looked at it, or he saw it from the point of view of a passing face. Uh, it has not come to stay, it has come to pass. And uh, with that attitude is what from time to time will help people to be able to deal with uh, the, the whatever will we, we, we come upon our world from time to time. All right? So we, we have um, a few questions that have been set, sent before now that we, we, we will dive into. Uh, and if you're joining us on any of the social media platforms, right now. I, I, I want you to sit tight, get ready to gain knowledge and wisdom. The Bible says a man of knowledge will increase strength. And you need that strength for this season. Uh, how do you deal with, you know, the, the things that will be pervasive at this time? Disappointments, hurts. How do we get healing from hurts? Those are the things that uh, we've asked people to write uh, questions about. And we're going to go through uh, those, those, uh, those questions right now. All right. So um, uh, the, the first question it says, uh, in this season, uh, there are many things that can trigger sadness, depression, uh, from loneliness to hardship. Um, you know, so what are the causes of dep depression and how can we uh, address it? I know you've, you've, you've uh, gone, I mean, you've handled uh, therapy sessions with many people before who've gone through all kinds of depressive experiences and all that. So from your knowledge in this field, what are the causes of the depression? Uh, what, what can we do to prevent? You know, sometimes we say prevention is better, better than, than cure. cure. It's better not to experience something than to be trying to get uh, healed from it. Uh, what are the causes and how do we, yeah. There are, there are a whole lot of factors that could cause depression from psychological to biological to social sources of uh, distress that could happen to one. And, um, and if you're going to break them into bits, uh, you're looking at the economic, cost, the economic state right now that we are in. Then uh, from there, you could, you're also looking at the loss of a loved one. Because looking at what is happening right now, a whole lot of people who have um, lost a loved one, either through the pandemic or either through uh, not being able to take them to the hospital because of fear of the pandemic and every other thing, are up we definitely battle with um, anger, frustration, which would eventually get to depression. Because depression is more or less, if you're going to put it on the hierarchy, the first depression is like the last stage of every other disempowering emotions. Mm -hmm. So you're also looking at the fact of loss of job. You're looking at the fact that you do not know what would happen to your child's school. Some people have the privilege of having their children go through online classes right now. Some do not have the privilege. Mm -hmm. Some... For some people, they've not even earned salary. For some people, there is no food. They cannot say this is where their next meal will come from. So when it comes to depression, a whole lot of factor 
could contribute to it and could cause it, and it could differ from one person to another person, then we should also understand that the way we deal with issues and challenges differ. I may be wired very strong to handle a certain kind of pain or a certain kind of distress. Some other person may not be able, may not be wired that same way. So individual personality and individual resilience to handle pain, disappointment, and hurt also differs. But how do you manage or how do you cope with depression? Or how do you just make it not even happen at all? When you realize that the end result or the effect of depression on you is more damaging than the challenge you're going through, then you are able to say to yourself, or you are able to understand yourself that it's a face I am going through right now. And the face I'm going through right now, because you always ask yourself, was I in this face yesterday? If the answer is no, so it means that there's a possibility you will not be in the face tomorrow. So when you are able to understand how the challenge started, try as much as possible to get help. People always run away from help, and that is where the challenge is. Get help to get treated. Once you get help, then it means that 30% of your issue is sorted out. Every other thing can pick up from there. So when you talk about getting help, uh, what, what would you recommend? I presume it starts with talking to somebody, verbalizing your experience, uh, coming to terms with the fact that you're feeling different. Yes. Yeah. And that there are some negative emotions that are trying to anger around you, uh, sort of, uh, maybe unnecessary anger, uh, you irritation, know, irritation, snapping, yes, you know, mm -hmm. and all that. And when all that starts to happen, it means that you need to talk you to someone. Yeah, you need to talk to someone. And um, I, I, I say to people, once you begin to have uh, panic attacks or anxiety attacks. Do not think it is normal. Do not think it's ordinary. You need to get to talk to someone. But talking to someone also means that you need to talk to the right person. Mm -hmm. Because you do not want to talk to someone who will take light of your pain. Or who will take light of your challenges. You don't want to talk to someone who will feel, what is it? After all, I also went through it. And feel, I just make light of it. Because that is what shuts people down. So you also want to look at your social circle, starting from your family. Family, the family unit is strong and has to be, is the most important. However, when within your family unit, there mm. is no one who understands or who is willing to understand what you're going through, then you go outside your family unit to seek for help. Come to your church. See your pastor. See a leader. When you see them, you also go look for a therapist to speak with. Because it's, I believe that everybody has their gifts and everybody has their mode of, uh, modus operandi. Everybody has their core of interest and core of operation. So what a pastor would do may be limited from what a therapist would do. Because a therapist will have to run analysis on you, will have to run diagnosis on you to know if your depression is aggressive or is mild. And that would lead to whatever treatment they want to give you. But it is key that you identify the right people because that is where it starts from. If you're able to identify the right people you want to speak with, what they would do is they would first and foremost allay your fears for you, put you at a state of stability. Okay. Then every other process can continue. Can so um, if I would summarize what you've said, it's first and foremost recognize that something is going wrong, yes. uh, that you are not yourself. And you know, from time to time, we go through situations that uh, will you know, push us off our regular, mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, but when it's a situation that you can easily bounce back, yes. you know, from uh, a little hurt, a little bit of bitterness, uh, something aggravated you a bit and, uh, you know, but you, you woke up, the, I mean, by the time you, you wake up the following day, you're feeling, okay. you are feeling okay. You can move on with life and everything is good. But by the time you realize that you go to work, you're snapping at everybody, you go it back home, uh, it becomes persistent mm -hmm. and you're trying to push yourself out of this, but it's becoming difficult, then you need to talk to someone. Uh, from talking to someone from the view of uh, helping you to figure out your emotions too, uh, helping you to know whether you need deeper help, uh, talking to pastors as well. I mean, these days you can place a call through, you can book a Zoom call or something, and then you, 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 you then get to a point where 
uh, you're either getting prayers or getting clarity. Yes. And prayers sometimes also lead to that clarity. So it does lead to the clarity. Yeah. It does yeah. lead to the clarity. All right. Um, so we'll move on quickly. Uh, the, 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 the next uh, question or scenario that's been posted is, uh, is it okay for a Christian to take antidepressants? Are they even safe? Uh, don't they lead to addiction? Uh, from your own practice experience, oh, can you say something about antidepressants generally? Yeah. Taking antidepressants when it is not prescribed for you by a medical practitioner is already drug abuse. So is it okay to take antidepressants? Before an antidepressant will be prescribed for you, it means that every diagnosis has been done, every analysis has been carried out, and yes, the medical practitioner sees that it is necessary for you to take it. And they would also give you in the dosage that is required of you, not above the dosage. If you go outside a medical, a prescribed medical expert to take antidepressant, you are abusing drug and definitely it will, you become addicted. So it only works for a moment because antidepressant is not supposed to be a continuous thing. You're supposed to take for a certain period, then go back for your medical checkup. But if you just begin to take, of course, it will lead to addiction and may create every, some other issues and challenges in your body. So what you're saying in essence is that uh, not every emotional situation will require medication. Not every emotional situation. And medication is part of a process. It is part of a process. Uh, and you must engage the process from the beginning. From the beginning. Not just jump At the gun all. and just Two things go to, that are used yeah. to treat uh, de uh, depression are antidepressant and therapy. Okay. So if the, your medical expert does not see the need, you, he or she would not prescribe it for you. Okay. All right. So you've heard it. Uh, don't jump into antidepressants. It's not meant for you if you're just uh, having a li li little bit of hurt or worry and all that. You need to seek a medical opinion before you get onto uh, taking medications. All right. Uh, another question is uh, that there, has, that there seem to be more and more emphasis on mental health. It's like uh, people can't even trust God anymore. What is the place of therapy in a believer's life? Isn't the Holy Spirit our counselor? Okay, I, I, I think I will answer that question. Um, <laughs> uh, so there's, uh, the emphasis on, on mental health is for awareness. It's, it, it's not uh, to position ourselves in such a way that we are robbed of our spiritual heritage in that we have faith in God for healing. Uh, but like I said before, Christ has been made to us the wisdom of God and the power of God. Uh, when you, you, you seek the process of, um, uh, you know, of therapy and all that, uh, ter therapy helps you to understand even what is going on sometimes. Sometimes people find it difficult to, uh, to gain clarity as per their emotions. Yes. And, uh, you know, you're feeling somehow, you're behaving somehow, you don't even know what is wrong. Or oh, am I angry? Am I dealing with fear? Is this anxiety? Mm -hmm. Is it unforgiveness I'm dealing with? Or is it the pain that, that I got from work, from working with a, a, a bad boss? Or is it just pain that's coming from my marriage? What's, yes. what's actually happening mm -hmm. to me? Those are all the things that uh, a therapist will help you to unpack. It makes your prayer clearer. It makes you seeking uh, the help of the Holy Spirit even clearer. You will know that maybe the Holy Spirit is going to work with you to then work in love with that boss until you're able to get another job. Uh, but if you're just reacting and you don't know what is going on, you may not be able to handle it well. The power of God is always available, uh, but, you know, uh, uh, power is maximized when it's better channeled. It's just like when we're talking about electricity. Um, uh, the electricity, when it's not properly packaged yes. to get into a building, mm -hmm. uh, for you to be able to sit on the uh, AC and uh, light and all that, uh, uh, when it remains at the high tension level, it's destructive. Yes. Uh, but when you gain clarity you are able to maximize the power of God and the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and also, I need for somebody to also gain clarity on this. Uh, we are at different levels in our relationship with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Uh, just like, I mean, the scripture, the Bible talks about Moses. Mm -hmm. Moses like, spoke to God almost like face-to-face, -face, like a man would speak to his, his, uh, his friend. Uh, but the, 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 the Israelites who said, we don't want to, yeah. When they saw the smoke and the different things at the mountain, mm -hmm. they said, Moses, you go and listen to God. Then we, some people are still at, at that level in their Christianity. 
Uh, so if we say, oh, just pray, you'll be okay without talking to anybody, we may be doing them a disservice. Some people are at the level where they can wake up in the morning and the Holy Spirit tells them, you are angry and it's because of what your spouse did to you. or because of, So go and do this and that. And then the Holy Spirit is your counselor. He helps you out. But not everybody is at that level. Mm -hmm. All right. Let uh, me quickly add yeah. this, uh, Pastor Goodman. I've been in sessions. I've been in therapy time to time number and I get stuck. Mm -hmm. And I don't say to myself, I excuse myself, I tell my client, please give me one minute. And I just go to pray. And I hear the Holy Spirit say, do this, do this, do this. One of the most effective and amazing therapies I use, intervention tools I use today, is something I got from the Holy Spirit. And so it's, the truth is, the Holy Spirit is in therapy. Therapy is in Holy Spirit. So it's your faith that would work for you. We have Christians that are therapists, and we we base our belief and our call and every result we get as a therapist from Christ and from the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God is called the Spirit of Comfort, yes. and therapy leads to comfort. And um, you can use somebody else to minister that comfort to you, and that's the place of, 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 of therapy. Let's, let's go to another question. Um, uh, it, it says, um, how do you recover when you feel God has let you down? and um, is the cause of your heartache, or even the faith environment may be the cause of your heartache. Okay, uh, uh, let me start with this one too, because this looks like something that happens in a, in a, in a faith community or church mm -hmm. or pastoral mm -hmm. environment. Now, I need for us to understand that the Jesus said, I did not come to seek uh, those who are already healed. I came for people who are hurting. Yeah, in Isaiah 53, the Messianic prophecy about Jesus there, he said to, to, to appoint to them who mourn in Zion. Zion speaks to the house mm -hmm. of God, uh, the kingdom of God, or the family of God. That means there will be people who mourn in Zion. There will be people who are having outbreaks in Zion. Hurt people, hurt people. Mm -hmm. That's what we say. Mm -hmm. So you don't go to church or go to, into any faith community and expect that everybody there is perfect. Mm -hmm. not, not, there's not, not one human being on the face of the earth today that is perfect. We only have people who are maturing as they go and they're growing. And when we encounter people, there's a possibility that it may hurt us. Our response to the hurt, whether it's coming from our own immediate family or from the household of faith, is very important. Uh, if, I, if I'm dealing with a baby, I know I'm dealing with a baby. So if a baby should pull on me, uh, defecates on me, I, I don't get angry and punch the baby because of that. Because you, you, my expectation of a baby is not as high to the level I expect that the baby yes. knows when to defecate mm -hmm. and when not to defecate. Mm -hmm. So what should be my response? My response is to be gracious and to understand that this person is behaving to the best uh, uh, level of their knowledge per time. So when we get into a church environment or even within our family and people misbehave, they hurt us, uh, we are the ones that should have the appropriate response. Maturity is responsibility, uh, ability to respond appropriately and not just to react. And when we react, we may, you may leave the church, you may walk out on your family members and feel that they are your problem. Maybe the problem is, uh, is, is, is they, they may be a part of the problem, but you may be a major part of the problem because of uh, uh, inappropriate response. Uh, sometimes we just want to, to run away from the source of the hurt. Uh, sometimes we want to uh, inflict pain on the source of the pain yes. even more. That's why you see a lot of that in marriage where uh, the wisdom of a soft answer that turns away wrath is always, uh, most of the time, not available in many homes. So it's fire for fire. Mm -hmm. You say this to me, I say my own back, and we break down conversations, and we're not having, making any headway. Yes. Uh, you know, so I, I would challenge anyone who feels like this, or anyone who, who uh, the person who wrote this, that please re-examine yourself. When you leave a church and you go to another church, you are going to meet human beings in that church too. Now I understand that every household of faith, every family should have a culture, a culture of love, mm -hmm. a culture of togetherness. Mm -hmm. But some people are still outliers. Within that culture, they will still go ahead and do their, own, do thing. their own thing. Yes. Yeah. But you just need to you know, manage your expectation and believe God for them and also grow. You know, even uh, on the cross, <laughs> they, laid, they, they abused Jesus. They did mm -hmm. all sorts on him. When you read that... Uh, 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 Isaiah uh, 53, when you read Isaiah 53 from verse 1 down, you see the Bible talks about Jesus said he was a man of, 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 of pain. He was acquainted with grief. 
they despised him. They did not consider him as anything beautiful to behold. And that's still happening in our world today. Mm -hmm. Jesus suffered that so that we will not suffer that. But some people still want us to suffer it. And when you encounter such people, your response, you, um, your thoughts should be, what will Jesus do? On the cross, Jesus looked at them. He said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Mm -hmm. uh, and that should still be the response of a believer today. Uh, I hope. Uh, <laughs> I, I think yeah. also that uh, people should also understand that uh, we are all from different backgrounds, uh, different upbringing, uh, different social significant experiences in life. So the way I would behave would be totally different from the way you would behave. So yeah. I may come cool, calm. Someone else may come an, in an aggressive way. How was that person brought up in his home? What did that person experience in their home while growing up? And also, I heard the person say that uh, if you feel that God is the, the, the cause of your heartache. Now, if God has given you instructions to do certain things, it would not come down to do those things for you. That's so right. you need to sit down, analyze all the things God has told you, the promises he has given to you. Right. How, what have you done per second, per time, to make sure that this promises remain or come to life and they never die. You mentioned marriage, which is key. I've heard people say, I prayed. And the Holy Spirit said, my husband is my wife. But what happened with divorce? My question would be, that is the part of the Holy Spirit. Your part was to make sure you, you made it work. Did you make it work? So when you take away responsibility of the things you're meant to do from yourself and you push it on God, then that is where you are lying to yourself. So you need to, as human beings, we need to also take responsibilities of our actions that we have done, that we intend to do, or that we may do in the future, because we should know that for every action comes a consequence. And those consequences could be fatal. Yeah. So the consequences of our action, we should not blame them on God. Uh, your action on in, or inaction, as the case may be, will have one consequence or the other. And when things then happen, the, ten, the human tendency is to find somebody to blame. to blame. A lot of the time, we want to blame God or blame other people rather than taking responsibility. Our God is ever faithful, mm -hmm. and his faithfulness is new every, every morning. morning. And God is not a man that he will lie. Mm -hmm. He will not lie mm -hmm. to you. His promises, the Bible says, are yea and amen in Christ. Uh, so when you start to blame God, just know that something is wrong. It will never be on God's part. It's on our part. When we refuse to grow, when we refuse to take responsibility, uh, and uh, please, I mean, if you're in this kind of situation, you need to re-examine yourself, all right? Um, okay, so another question, it says, uh, 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 please speak to postpartum depression. Everyone expects new moms to bounce back from, uh, or bounce back, but with all the stress of life uh, these days, even uh, the stress of getting, uh, getting back into shape, you know, when a woman has just delivered, uh, maybe she's had it weight, all those kind of things. I said the stress of getting back into shape is, is so tiring. Uh, and, uh, you know, so same for other forms of trauma. Uh, people seem to expect you to recover speedily. People say, you know, pick up yourself. You know, you're not the only one going through this. You just lost a job. We know it may be traumatic, but pick up yourself, you know. Uh, what, what do you say to that? Healing is a process. And for that process to be completed or to get to the end, every individual who is hurt must go through that process. Now, we're, we're talking about PPD, which is a postpartum uh, depression, and you coming back to sheep. I would always say to pregnant women, never live your life for anyone. Mm. When you are pregnant, it is a must you would gain weight. Yeah. When you give birth to baby, now, the baby shedding weight takes time for some other people. Mm. And it is fast for some other people. You need to ask yourself, what are the things? Do you really want to shed weight? Because it's not everybody that wants to shed weight. But because people would hear what other people are saying, and they put themselves on dieting, strenuous exercises, that they've not even checked their health, if their health can carry those exercises. Mm. So for anyone going through PPD due to weight gain or weight loss, first thing you want to ask yourself, do you want to go insane over a body shape that would, can lose itself naturally if you are committed and dedicated? Remember, you're still breastfeeding. So until you stop breastfeeding, the weight loss will not, may not even come to pass. So if you are true to yourself, you are asking yourself, 
So what do I really need to do after breastfeeding? Don't live your life for people. Live your life for yourself. Because when you live your life for yourself, the joy of living your life for yourself, the sanity and the saneness of living your life for yourself is your own end result. If people come and say to you, your nose is big, tell them it is my nose. Is it our nose? It is not a community nose. It is my nose. So but enjoy your body while you are pregnant, after you're pregnant, while you're breastfeeding. And if you feel you want to lose weight, please do the right thing. Just don't join the bandwagon. Then when it comes to other trauma, depending on the kind of trauma people have gone through, let people walk through the mountains of their trauma to their healing. I say to people, someone just lost, maybe a, wife, a, 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 a woman lost her husband or a man lost his wife. And you are saying, be a man, stop crying. No, you don't say that. Let him go through the process. Because if he does not go through the process, he would get depressed and he would begin to have issues. So let him go through the process. I tell people, you have the right to mourn as long and as much as you want to. You will get to your peak points of mourning. That you, you will get to that peak point. And once you get to the peak point, you realize that you start coming down. And once you come down, you get to the point where you reach the acceptance level. It's because of, we don't let people get to the acceptance level when, they are, when they've experienced a distressful uh, pain or a distressful issue. That is when people go into depression. They begin to have suicidal tendency. They begin to hate themselves or they want to kill some other people. Let them go through the process and get to their peak. And once they get to their peak, they start healing up. Thank you very much, Zuriel. Um, I, I see that uh, there's a process that people always need to engage when it comes to any kind of trauma, yes. whether it's a, a, a postpartum or whatever, whatever it is. Whatever trauma. Yeah, lost a job. You know, I, I, I mean, I would liken it to uh, the process that we go through in physical trauma. Yes. So when I was younger, I used to play uh, football with friends, and then you get to a point where uh, maybe somebody more physical than mm -hmm. you just gives you a very hard tackle. Um, but because you are limping and everybody can see you, uh, people, you know, have a way of talking to you, so, you know, sorry and all mm -hmm. that. But in emotional stuff, it's difficult to see when people are going through trauma. It's difficult. People just expect mm -hmm. you, come to work, do your work, do this, you know. If you're married, if your spouse is saying, no, pick up yourself, mm -hmm. you know. And mm -hmm. it, 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 it further compounds it. So we need to allow people to go through the process, whether yeah, somebody just lost a loved one yes. or lost something mm -hmm. that's there to mm -hmm. them, there's a process. And healing comes in the process. It comes in the process. Yeah, healing comes in the mm -hmm. process. So we all need to understand that, encourage people. Even when we pray for people, as we're praying for people, God starts to move in their lives. Mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes there's a process that they still need to go back to so that there will be no relapse. There will be no relapse. Yeah. Th th thank you for that, uh, that contribution. All right. All um, right. Uh, we have maybe one, one or two more questions. How do you manage emotional abuse, be it from parents, loved ones, bosses, you know, spouses, it is a, uh, what should a victim of emotional abuse do? So how do you manage abuse, emotional abuse, and what should a victim of emotional abuse do? Some emotional abuse are permitted by the one who allowed himself or herself to be emotionally abused. And some are just outside your control. So an example would be you're working with a boss who himself has gone through a lot and does not even know how to manage his emotions. And all the pain is straining it on you. What you want to do, be your parent, be a boss or anybody who is emotionally abusing you. One, if you are able to sit and speak with this person, letting this person know what the person is doing to you and how it's affecting you and how it may end up affecting your productivity and affect your life, it is amazing. However, if you're not able to sit with this person, even when you sit with the person, the person is not willing to change. There's a tendency that after you finish sitting with this person to talk, the person goes on a full throttle on you, feeling that, oh, you have the guts and effort to come meet me. Mm. One thing you want to do is you need to speak to your mind. Mm. Speak to your mind. Let your mind know that you are not what this individual is saying you are or what the damage this individual is doing to you. However, if you're not able to cope with the emotional abuse, I say to people, pull out. Um, I did a post sometime and I said, it is not wickedness when you turn your back against an individual who has been emotionally abusing you. Because your sanity 
is more important and you staying alive and being alive in a sane environment, sane body, is very important. So there are people you need to detach from. You may not be able to detach from your parents, but there is a way you can manage your parents because I know uh, emotional abuse comes from certain parents. But if you also look at it, these are parents who most likely grew up in a home where they were also emotionally abused. So it became a norm for them. They do not know any other way to handle you. But if you, this is where you also need to trace the history of your dad, your, of your mom. How did they grow up? Once you are able to discover that, you empathize with them. Yeah. And you are able to re-engineer your mind. Mm. Hey, boss, can you change the job? Mm. Is it mm. possible? Mm. If it's not possible, what do you want to do to your mind? How do you want to detox? Detoxing is important. Mm. So that by the time you are... And this is one way I tell people when they detox, when they are in an emotionally um, insane environment... And you need to go home. Because the tendency that you get home and pour on your anger, your frustration on your wife, on your children is really key. Create a voice note for yourself where you give your own personal, empowering, and positive emotions that you listen to. What it will do is it will help you douse whatever pain, whatever toxin, any individual filled with toxic, toxin has thrown at you. So that would help you. And it's just working on your mind majorly. If you cannot detach, if you cannot turn your back on these people, it's working on your mind. So thank you, Zuria. So if somebody is going through uh, emotional abuse, you said look for the possibility of turning your back or walk away, uh, create some boundaries between you and the abuser. Yes. Uh, when that is not possible, then you have to create an atmosphere around your life that, ten, that should be able to insulate you or give you uh, better feelings about yourself. Yes. So that when the person has finished saying or doing whatever they're doing, you have a way of reaffirming yourself. yourself. Uh, speak to yourself from the word of God. Uh, confess the word of God on yourself. You know, I'm a blessed child of yes. God. I have peace with mm -hmm. God. I am wonderfully and fearfully made. Uh, I'm, uh, you know, I'm handcrafted by God. Yes. God has a purpose for mm -hmm. my life. I'm walking into my destiny. My future is bright. I'm a blessing. I'm not a curse. You know, when, when, when positive you... Affirmations. Yeah, positive affirmation. Positive uh, affirmation that's based on the word mm -hmm. of God. It, they, they, they ha those things have a way of creating the right atmosphere, atmosphere around you mm -hmm. that can help you, you know, deal with the, yes. the, the abuse. But the key thing, the first thing is... Look for a way, Look for to, a way cut off. to cut off. Yeah, because you, you, you don't want to get to a there's point. A limit you can there's a limit take. you can take. Yeah, there's a limit and you get to a point that you can snap. Yes. But before getting to that point, you need to, you need to cut off. Uh, thank, thank you very much uh, for, for that. All right. So um, uh, we, we, we'll move into our, our last question. Uh, and I think it's an interesting one. He said, how do you manage stress and pressure? Being overwhelmed uh, by issues, especially in a season like this is really causing a lot of mental and emotional strain. So how do you manage uh, stress? How do you manage pressure? Yeah. First and foremost, you need to be able to identify what are your stressors. Mm -hmm. And I think that is where people, do not, people tend to have a challenge with. They feel that. So I hear people say, I can multitask. Mm -mm. You cannot multitask. You have the ability to do certain things at certain time at certain pace and at a certain wellness of you, either emotionally, mentally, socially, spiritually, and physically. So if you have looked at yourself and find out that, oh, I am getting stressed, identify your stressors. What are the things that are stressing you? And I say to people, not everything is your business to do. It is not every business that is your business. Don't get involved in everything. Don't feel that you have to belong in 1,000 groups on any of the social media. Don't feel that you need to wake up in the morning and you need to get the house ready, your house mode. Mm -mm. Learn to what I call shut down. So when you are stressed or shut down, create, it can be in your home, it can be in your car, it can be somewhere in your, in your office. Create your own positive and uh, positive empowering zone where you just go sit down take your phones away from you appeal to the children if they are still young and they are small and there is nobody that can take care of them now that may not be possible when they are awake but if your children are grown let them know you need your me time 
And your meet time is saying that you cannot come and knock at my door except there is an emergency. And if you're married, you need to speak to your spouse also. So if you're able to identify your stressor, then you're able to know what you need to take out. The irrelevant things that have taken up your time. Then you're able to manage yourself. The next word is, I think, the stressor and um, what next? Uh, pressure. Sometimes we put ourselves under undue pressure. No one is pushing us. No one is pursuing us. And because sometimes we tend to look at other people's life mm. and compare our life with them. We are looking at your neighbor that is doing, and you don't know what your neighbor is doing. You're looking at your neighbor's wife that is wearing, and you're putting stress on your husband, or you're putting stress on yourself. Take away things that you know that you may not be able to achieve this year. If you're able to take those things away, you find out that, first and foremost, your head is calm. The unnecessary headaches you are having disappear. Your body releases tension, and you're able to sleep well. Then all the drugs you are popping to make you sleep in the night, you stop popping them. Identify your stressor. Understand the pressures you have taken upon yourself. That is unnecessary. You may, yes, you may need to even speak with your boss mm. and say, okay, so can I get this tax done next mm. week? Mm. Speak with a colleague. Please, can, we, can you help me? Let's do this. This is what I am going through. But most, and also I also encourage people, so when, I'm going, when you're battling with stress and pressure, please try as much as possible to see your doctor because they could have a better uh, medical um, um, how would I put it, uh, medical analysis to give to you. Because if it's it may be affecting you internally, I don't think it's just physically is affecting you. Thank you very much, Z Zuria. Um, I, I, I once uh, tried to read up about psychosomatic illnesses. Mm. And these are illnesses that are, are not based on any uh, pathological background mm -hmm. of maybe virus or germs mm -hmm. or anything. It's just from the concept of whatever the mind cannot handle, it passes to the body. body. Yeah. And then you, you start to feel weakness. Mm -hmm. uh, some people just feel their body moving uncontrollably. Mm -hmm. And it's something that's an offshoot of what they're going through in their mind because they've taken too much, you know, on themselves. Uh, after I got married, I realized that one of the areas where my wife and I are different is that I can keep uh, doing something, mm -hmm. you understand, and doing, doing, I just want to continue to do. She gets to a point and she just said, no, you know I'm what? I'm shutting down. I'm shutting down. This day is over. Tomorrow is another mm. day. And I learned a lot from that. Mm. And a lot of people who are like me need to get their lives to the point where uh, you manage pressure, yeah. you manage stress. Mm. You can't do everything today. You can't, you can't do everything this year. Mm. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, God will preserve your life to yes. see many more years, and you'll do many more things. Many more things. Yeah, and you do many, you see many more days. Yes. Uh, thank you very, very much, uh, 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 Zuria, for, for that, uh, that, that powerful answer and perspective. Uh, uh, so uh, for everyone joining this broadcast and this service today, I believe that uh, you've been able to get a lot from what we have shared. Uh, th this, these are things that we need to pay attention to this season. When Zuria was talking about, uh, you know, just managing the pressure and the stress, uh, we're living with a lot today. Uh, people are working from home. Many people are not used to that before. Mm -hmm. uh, you are homeschooling your kids. You're not used to that before. A lot of stressors uh, coming our way, what I, 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 I call drainers when I teach couples. Uh, you know, we talk about... Uh, Fillers and drainers. A lot of things are draining from us. Things that uh, we, we, we're struggling to do. They're not from our strong suit, and we're just struggling to do them. And a lot of that is piling up. And then on top of that, we have all kinds of conspiracy theories that are flying mm -hmm. left, right, and center that's, that are bringing fear into the heart of people. Uh, can I say to you today, our world is not about to come to an end. Mm -hmm. We have an understanding from Matthew 24. Jesus told us the signs of the end time. Don't panda into any uh, uh, you know, conspiracy theory that will put uh, um, your heart uh, you know, uh, uh, in a very unbalanced place uh, or that will uh, inflict more fear, more pain to you uh, to the point that you, 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 you start to agitate and you, you, you engage worry. Uh, I'm just encouraging you. Uh, there's peace in our world today. God is in, in control, is in charge, and he has great plans for you and your household. Uh, Zuria, it's been nice having you, uh, you join me today uh, 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 at Switch. 
and we look forward to uh, sharing more moments with you in the future. Uh, uh, we're, we're, we're going to uh, take a break right now, and when I come back, I'm going to lead you in prayers, and we're going to partake of the communion, and I want you to gather your family together because it's going to be a time of spiritual empowerment, and your life will never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. to lift your hands wherever you are right now if you're not driving and your hand is not engaged i want you to lift your hands to jesus and just bless him and just thank him he's still uh, the healer he's still uh, the restorer he's the one uh, that restores us where we're broken and for anyone who may be suffering from any kind of hurt any kind of uh, bitterness right now pain in the body pain in your emotion but will you lift your hands to him and just receive the ministry of the healer into your heart afresh at this moment. Grace is coming upon you. Whatever you are joining this service, grace is coming upon you at this moment uh, to lift you from where you are to where God wants you to be, emotionally, mentally, and physically. Uh, glory be to Jesus. Just bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus this evening. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for divine enablement coming upon everyone this evening. Uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, Paul was writing there in in, in verse 8, he said, We are at press on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Will you lift your two hands to Jesus today and begin to receive grace? Because this is your portion. You may have lost a job. Uh, your, your mind may be in trouble right now. Many things may be happening around you, but I want you to know that the grace of God is coming upon your life this season. And I want you to begin to declare it. In the name of Jesus, I receive grace. I receive strength to overcome this challenge. I receive grace uh, to rise up uh, from that bed of depression. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I receive grace to overcome worry. I receive grace to overcome anxiety. I want you to begin to declare it right now. That same grace that was upon the Apostle Paul when he was writing this scripture. And he says, we are cast down but not destroyed. We are perplexed but not in despair. You may feel perplexed right now, but I want you to receive grace this evening. Not to remain in despair. In the name of the Lord Jesus. May the hand of God come upon you in your home right now. Come upon you in your vehicle right now. Come upon you in, in, in the office right now. God is lifting you beyond the pain of the past. Uh, somebody lift your voice right now. And begin to declare, I am not my past. I am not my past. There's a new beginning for me this season. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I want you to declare it. Uh, declare it. God is a God of our past. He's God of our present and God of our future. And there's a new grace that is available for the current time. And there's a new grace that is available to take you into your future. Will you declare today that I'm not my past? God is doing something new in my life. He said, remember not the former thing or the things of old. He said, I will do a new thing. Declare it right now. Lord, I'm ready for something new. So I receive fresh grace for new beginning, for newness in my life. I refuse to be held back by the things of the past, by the hurt of the past, by the, the, the bitterness of the past, by the pain of the past. I'm moving beyond my pain in the name of the Lord Jesus. I want you to declare, declare it right now. My God is taking you beyond your pain in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We give you glory and we give you praise. Uh, I, 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 I love to lead us last day today to pray for the oil of joy. The oil of joy. Uh, in Psalm 45, when you read verse 6 and 7, uh, it says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. This is a Messianic psalm of the sons of Korah, just talking about the, 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 what, what, uh, what will happen in the life of Jesus and by implication in the life of each and every one of us who will be followers of Jesus. It says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. He said, You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, the Lord your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness. Uh, more than your companions. And in Isaiah 53, uh, it, 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 it also speaks to that, that, that all of joy. Uh, uh, he, he said, uh, in, in verse 5 there, he said, but he was wounded for our transgression, he was bruised for our iniquity, the transgression of, of our peace was upon him, and by his tribe we were healed. And that healing transcends just physical healing. It also reaches to the realm of emotional wholeness emotional wholeness. I want you to lift your hand to Jesus today. Lift your voice to him and begin to declare, Lord, I receive over my life, over my family, 
the oil of joy. Uh, anything that contends with my joy this season, I come against it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Will you declare that the oil of joy is your portion this season? Again tonight, I want you to declare it and bind the spirit of heaviness and its operation over your heart, over your life, over your family. In the name of Jesus, we withstand the hold of the spirit of heaviness. We break the hold of the spirit of heaviness in the name of the Lord Jesus. And we decree the oil of joy is upon you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, uh, the psalmist says he, uh, he, he sets a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He anoints my head with oil and my cup runs over. I want you to declare fresh anointing over your life today. And the, the kind of grace and anointing that nothing will be able to stop this season. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Wave your hands to him and bless him. Wave your hands to him and bless him. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Let the seed of your word and the seed of encouragement, and uh, uh, the seed of comfort that has been sown today, lift someone out of the, 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 the dungeon of, 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 of emotional uh, despair into the level that you, you want to take us to this season, into the place of joy, of peace, of emotional wellness. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you, our Father. And we speak peace into every home. We speak peace into every life. We speak to every storm to be calm in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We give you glory and we give you praise. We give you glory and we give you praise. And I love to pray this moment for anyone who may be joining this service uh, right now. For whatever platform you're joining from, whatever city, whatever nation. Uh, but you know that you're far away from God. The enemy has been attacking your heart because he knows that there's guilt in your heart. He knows uh, that, that you don't have power with God. He knows that you are afraid of God, so he is leveraging that to even inflict more pain, more fear uh, into you. I want you to understand something today. There's no sin that our God cannot forgive. No sin at all. No sin at all. The blood of Jesus is still potent, and the mercy of God is still available. I want to, to pray for you today. Anyone who is far from God, who wants to say, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus, or anyone who, who may even be saying, I've given my life to Jesus before, uh, but I backslid into sin. I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. I want to give you the same opportunity today uh, uh, and after which I'm going to partake of the communion. But before we partake of the communion, I love for anyone who is not in Christ or who wants to be restored to say this prayer after me. Will you put your hands on your heart wherever you may be right now just to say that you're in agreement with me as we say this prayer together. I'm, I'm, I want you to say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. I've been far away from you. I want to rededicate my life to you. Uh, I ask that you forgive me my sins, that you cleanse me from every unrighteousness. I receive you again today as my Lord and my personal Savior. I ask that you fill my heart with your spirit and give me a new beginning in the precious name of the Lord Jesus. If you just said that prayer with me, I want you to know that the newness that has come into your life, uh, whatever has separated you from God, has been breathed right now. And the power of the Holy Spirit is now at work in your life to lift you uh, beyond depression, to lift you uh, beyond whatever the enemy may want to use to hold you down into the fullness of God's will and God's plans for your life. Uh, 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 I want you to reach out to us through the numbers that are scrolling on the screen, if you're on YouTube or Facebook or whatever platform, you see some links that we'll send to you uh, just for you, for us to know that you've made a decision. We would love for, for, uh, uh, for you to avail us of the opportunity of ministering to you beyond now, sending you some materials that we believe will help you and uh, avail yourself of the opportunity to be counseled and uh, to be comforted in a way that will set you on the right path for your spiritual development. And God will bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. All right, I want to pray over the communion element that we have with us uh, in the different places where we are right now. I, I have here uh, the, the, the combo of wafer and, and wine, and that's, that's what uh, I'm going to use as a point of contact as I pray for you. Uh, whether it's a bread, biscuit, a wafer, whatever you have, water, wine, juice, I want you to, to present it as a pray. We do this in remembrance of the finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. The Bible says that his body was wounded and bruised for our sake. Uh, uh, his blood was shed for our sake. And the, 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 through his blood, healing was procured for us. Uh, and he said we should uh, partake of the communion uh, to remember what he did for us. 
and I, I want you to know to now that as you partake of this communion, the life of God will sort through your body. It will sort through your emotions. Wherever there has been cracks and brokenness that is putting, uh, holding your life back, uh, whatever mental torture that anyone may be going through right now, by the power in the blood of Jesus, the healing power of God comes upon you right now as you partake of this table and you will never be the same again in the name of the Lord Jesus. So, Father, we thank you uh, for this communion element that has been set before us. Uh, we bless uh, uh, this and we declare that this is your body that was broken for us and your blood that was shed for us. So, we receive grace over everyone that will partake of the communion this evening. Let the heavens open over us afresh. Let grace be released to take us through this season. We decree that nothing will break down around us again, starting with our emotions. We receive over everyone the oil of joy, and we decree strength is renewed to us from our innermost being. In the name of the Lord Jesus, thank you uh, for this month of June, because it shall be from one testimony to the other. Where doors have been shut before now, those doors will open of their own accord. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for a book of remembrance that is open concerning someone's career, someone's business. In the name of Jesus. So we receive good news from the far country. We receive good news from the places that matter. In the name of Jesus, I speak peace over that family and concerning that child uh, that's been a source of worry. We receive your peace over that child right now. And we decree uh, that in that situation is turning into a testimony for that family. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you for good news in our careers, good news in our businesses. Uh, thank you uh, for uh, grace for someone to return back to the place of prayer and to become uh, stronger in the, in the faith this season. And I decree over you today that your faith will no longer fail. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I want you to go ahead and partake of the communion. Go ahead and partake of it. Go ahead and partake of it. Praise God. Praise God. Just go ahead and bless the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this wonderful time in your presence. And we thank you for your grace that has been released today. And thank you for new beginning uh, for everyone in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. If you can, can you put your hands together and celebrate Jesus right where you are? Come on, go ahead. Put your hands together uh, and celebrate Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Father, we thank you. Thank you because we believe that the hold of anxiety attack is broken. The hold of worry is broken in the name of Jesus. And we're moving from hurt uh, to healing, wholeness, and health in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We we'll bless your name in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Uh, before we bring the service to a close, I, I, I love uh, to encourage everyone to package uh, an offering, get your, uh, your devices or work. However you give this season, uh, we, we give uh, mainly through our electronic channels, uh, whether it's your phone, your, uh, your iPad, or your tablet, whatever uh, is convenient for you. I want you to grab that right now as we give to God. And like I've been saying on Sundays, I, I need you to understand that our giving is not a donation. It's our worship. It's our worship to our God. It's our covenant obligation to our God. So you're not donating. You're giving. You're worshiping God with your substance. And I want you to do it, uh, or, uh, let it come from your heart. Let it come from your heart. Let it be from your heart to God. And as we do this, we lay up treasure for ourselves in, in, in heavenly places uh, where a thief cannot come in, where economic depression cannot reach, uh, where currency devaluation cannot reach, uh, because our God is faithful and he always visits us with his favor. I want to pray over our giving today, whatever, whatever uh, you're giving with, whether it's your phone or whatever. I want you to hold it, uh, because as resources will leave your account to God's kingdom this season, the heavens opens over your life in the name of the Lord Jesus. So, Father, we pray for everyone honoring you uh, with an offering, with a seed, with a tithe, uh, whatever kind of seed your people are sowing this season. We ask that you look upon the seed favorably, accept it as our worship, and uh, also uh, cause it to prime the heavens open over each and every one of us. There shall be no lack in our lives this season in the name of the Lord Jesus. I also pray for anyone who may not have anything at all to give right now. Uh, but they're giving their heart in worship. I pray in the name of Jesus that you accept uh, uh, the sacrifices of, of, of just spending time in your presence and you cause the heavens to open over them also that by the next time we gather together, uh, they will have a testimony of 
divine provision in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, also, before we bring the service to a close, I'd also love to welcome anyone watching with us for the first time. Thank you very, very much uh, for joining our service today. We hope that you join us again and, and again on these platforms and several other platforms. Uh, please follow us on social media, uh, on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, and get some more updates about our, our church and the different activities that we have that will be a blessing to you. Thank you uh, for being a part of this service. And I, I pray for each and every one of us that the, the meaning days of this week will bring goodness into your life and the grace of God will continue to abound towards you in the name of Jesus. We have one or two announcements and we'll bring the service to a close. So please stay tuned and take the announcement. God bless you. Have a great evening. Thanks for joining us for service today. We trust that you will have a testimony to share in the very near future. When that happens, please share it with us by sending an email to testimonies at elevationng.org. We have been receiving lots of testimonies this season and we trust God with you for your own testimony very soon. Please join us for our morning prayers, Mondays to Saturdays, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. West African time on the Zoom app. The link is now displayed and will be shared on our various social media platforms. Join us this Sunday on our various social media platforms at 7, 9, and 11 a.m. Don't forget to hit the subscribe buttons so that you don't miss any part of service. Remember, we are a call or an email away. Call us on 0700 Elevate, that is 0700-353-8283. Or mail us at info at elevationng.org. And finally, if this broadcast has been a blessing to you, please let us know. Again, you can send an email to info at elevationng.org. Be safe, everyone. God bless you and have a great week ahead.